All right, these are, you got beakers, different volumes. You've got beaker tongs. You can use that if you got to hot something in the beaker. You can pick it up without burning your hands. Or if it's something smaller, you can use these hot mitts. These are Erlenmeyer flasks. And similarly to the beakers, you can see there's some volume markings on there. But those volume markings should be considered approximate on the beakers and on the Erlenmeyer flasks. These are graduated cylinders. Their precision depends on the markings on the cylinder. You're always going to record one decimal place past where the markings were. So for example, if it were marked to the tenths place, you would estimate the hundredths place. If it were the ones place, you would estimate the tenths place, etc. This is a Bunsen burner and striker. You'd use a striker to light the Bunsen burner if you need a flame to heat something in the lab. The dish there is an evaporating dish and you'd put a liquid with a dissolved solute in the evaporating dish and then you would supply heat to the evaporating dish to evaporate the liquid and get the solid back out. The square there is just a ceramic tile and you would use that to put something hot on it so that it wouldn't damage the counter. All right. What you have pictured there is a crucible with lid and the tongs. You'd use the tongs to manage the lid and to lift the crucible on and off heat. You'd put what you want heated in the crucible for different labs and cover with the lid. Here we have funnels and we got our funnel rack. And there's a beaker there underneath and all that's mounted to a ring stand. And one of the funnels, you can see there's some filter paper. You can see the box of the filter paper there, but you would use that for filtering a solid out of a liquid or just to pour a liquid into a smaller container without making a mess. This is a Buchner funnel, or some people just call it a filter funnel. You would put filter paper in the top and you'd use that to separate a solid from a liquid that it's in, say a solid precipitate. The hose you see would be connected to a source of vacuum. In our case, in our labs, we have them on the side of the sink. And you would use that to pull the liquid through more quickly than you ordinarily would be able to. Right here on the ring stand, you can see the iron ring and use that for mounting things onto the ring stand. You can see the clay triangle there to the left and it would go on there and it would hold things like crucibles up onto the ring. If you need to heat something like a beaker over a Bunsen burner, you would use the wire gauze and put it over the ring. All right, so what we've got there is test tube rack in the back with test tubes. We got red and blue pH paper. They come in little tubes like that. If the blue turns red, it's an acid. If the red turns blue, it's a base. This is a metal spatula used for scooping out solids. Here is a glass stern rod. It's got a rubber tip. They call that a rubber policeman. And here's a glass rod without that on it. But the rubber policeman is for getting solids out that, and scraping them out. Here's a little, another little metal spatula for scooping solids. These are tweezers, and this is a test tube clamp that you would use for moving around the test tubes when they are hot. All right, this watch glass, sometimes you, we put samples on those if we had to store them to let them dry, or you can put them over things that are heating so that the solvent doesn't evaporate away. The thing on the right is a spot plate and you can use small amounts of different chemicals to see how they would react. Does it precipitate form? Does it change color? What happens? You can 
test that on a smaller scale and use less chemicals. Here we got our ring stand again, attached to it. That's where that butterfly shape, that's a burette clamp and into it you can see a burette clamp. The way the valve, that orange valve is now, that's actually open, but it helps you be able to see it in the video a little better. Horizontal would be closed, vertical would be open. And what you can't probably see is that that burette is marked to the tenths place. So when you read a burette, you want to estimate the hundredths place. That clamp lower on the ring stand is actually a universal clamp for clamping various things on your setup. All right, we have here pipettes and in our case pipette pumps. You'd use the pump on the end of the pipette to draw up liquid. They can either be graduated like the pipette in the center, the two with the bulbs in the middle, or designed to fill one volume. Generally, those pipettes are good to two decimal places. So if it were a 10 milliliter pipette, it would be 10.00 milliliters is what it's designed to deliver. The graduate way would ones you're going to have to just go by the markings on the side of the pipette.